Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. If you are a new subscriber, you can benefit and get the most out of the Master's Voice Prophecy blog by using the dashboard where all the videos are and you can rely on the playlists that are there. Playlists have been set up so that prophecies that are similar in theme can help you navigate the blog better. So there are playlists on Russia and China. The fact that the Lord says that there will be an invasion here in the United States in the future. There is a repentance series that is essential for Christians new and old. Most Christians don't understand about what sin is. They don't understand the process of repentance. They don't understand how not knowing those two fundamental things in the center of our faith often distances us from God and has us existing in a kind of Christianity that is at cross purposes with what God truly wants for his people. There's also a sin series. There is an America series. If you use the playlists, and go through all the videos I recommend from oldest videos to newest. Just change the filter on each playlist. When you click a playlist, it will take you to a new tab and then look among, among the little toggles there until you see something that allows you to filter the videos from oldest to newest. If you go through these videos methodically step by step, what you find out is that there is a wonderful layering process that they take you through. It helps you to deal with fear. It helps you to combat unbelief. It helps you to get over the response mechanism where you always feel that you need to say something and have something to add to what God has already said. Everything here in the master's voice has been given to me by the Holy Spirit, given to me by the Lord himself. So I'm reading out the Lord's messages to the church at large, to the nation of the United States, and to any other nation that God would bring up to let the world know what is ahead. And so I received two prophecies today, and by the grace of God, they will both be handled, but I'm going in the order that the Lord has brought. This prophecy, I received it in church today, literally during the sermon, and I wrote it down as things were ongoing. The prophecy is called, The Floods Have Lifted Up. October the 15th, 2023. So I was in church today and the Lord began to say to me, Psalm 93, Psalm 93, Psalm 93. So I opened my Bible and I read the whole Psalm. And when I came to Psalm 93 and verses three and four, my attention was arrested there. And the Lord himself began to read out the verses. And the verses are as follows. These, these two verses, Psalm 93, three and four, are the banner scripture for this word. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. And so in this psalm, the psalmist here is pausing on three and four to talk about either the presence of actual raging waters that are taking place, an actual act of flooding that is happening. But it is much more likely that the psalmist is talking about here how the waves of life can become quite brutal. Jesus himself spoke of this when he was talking about those who build their house on the rock, where he was saying that the floods will rise, the winds will rise, the waves of the sea will become quite brutal, and they will beat against those who built their house on the sand and those who built their house on the rock equally. So Jesus is telling us of a time that will come when the difficulties of life will seem like the sea, when it is stirred up during a hurricane, during one of those sea tornado events, or worst of all, during a tsunami. And he is saying that it will be such a difficulty. It will be such a grave storm that will come to the lives of all people that it will become a separator. We will see those who have built their lives on the rock, Jesus Christ himself, the word of God itself, or we will see those who have put their trust in governments, put their trust in government programs, put their trust in their savings, put their trust in the fact that they have bought gold and they have it offshore in some secure banking place. Those who have put their trust in sand, things that will be easily washed away once the mechanisms get moving and the times that we live in give way to the future time of the beast system. 
And these floods will lift up their voice and they will have such a mighty roar. They will terrify many peoples on earth. The times that are coming are not times for the faint of heart. So to those who are not storing up oil in their lamps, to those who are not spending time in fellowship with Jesus, to those who are not separating themselves from awkward lifestyles that are unrighteous lifestyles that will do them no favors when they stand before the Lord those will be terrifying times indeed. And even to the child of God, these will be some of the most trying times that we have ever been through. So once you're a human being and you're hearing these words and you're hearing the, the warnings of God constantly to prepare, 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 and yet you keep saying it's doom and it's just fear mongering, then you don't have your pulse. You don't have your finger on God's pulse. You don't have your finger accurately on what is coming to this earth. And that is the contingent that is just in for nasty surprises. So whether it's somebody who's saved, somebody who's atheist, somebody who's seeking, please understand that the floods that are ahead of us, floods of ungodliness, the scripture speaks of, floods of iniquity, floods of madness, as has been prophesied here, that will come over many nations, including the nation of the United States. If you are not adequately preparing yourself, do not think that your personal stance, these prophecies, and even the word of God are going to care about that. These things are coming whether a person is ready, whether a person believes it or not, whether a person still needs a little bit more time to prepare, we're starting to see a lot of natural disasters here in the United States and nobody's getting advance warning. These things are just happening. And so the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters. This is the scripture promising us that the Lord Jesus is still the same one who calmed the winds and the waves when his disciples were getting battered by storms in the boat. And so these three, ver two verses, three and four, that the floods are lifting up that the floods are lifting up a mighty voice, but the voice of God is higher than the noise of the waves. One verse is telling the righteous, you should know where to put your trust and you should know who to call on in the day that the floods lift up their voice because they will lift up their voice. Verse four, the fact that you can depend, depend on Jesus Christ does not cancel out. Verse three, the fact that the floods will lift up their voice. Here's the word of the Lord. Florida will have another water disaster, says the Lord, worse than the first. Florida and New York, the floods, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods have come back to you and worse than before they will be. Your hearts are hard. Your hearts are lifted up. You have not heard my word. You have not repented of your murders and fornication. You have not repented of your idolatry and you continue to defy the Lord. And so God is saying that Florida is going to get hit with another water disaster and it will be worse than the first one. This is in Florida. Florida had record flooding on April 12th, 2023. And I prophesied to Florida on April the 2nd, just 10 days before, that God said he was going to batter them with storms. The Lord said, and let me re refer to the prophecy here for accuracy. I took some notes after watching it today. So Florida had record flooding on April 12th, 2023. 10 days before that, the title of the prophecy on the internet is called The Floods Are Coming. You can also find this, this prophecy on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. That's www.the-masters-voice.com. And the prophecy was on the 2nd of April, 2023. And the Lord said that Florida has sins that have greatly angered him. It was a dual word to Florida and to Texas. But for purposes of this prophecy, I will only read what relates to Florida. God said that Florida is full of sin. And God said that Florida's sin was greatly angering him. One of the sins that the Lord mentioned is that Florida is a separate country, that Florida has a is a world unto itself. Florida no longer sees itself in its, heart, in its heart as part of the United States. So they've built up a separate culture, God was saying, and that culture is guns and 
religion and making Donald Trump an idol. And the Lord says that they have pulled themselves away in practice and in thought from the general USA. And that attitude greatly offends him. So at the time this prophecy was brought forward, people in Florida were very vocal on the 2nd of August. No matter where I posted the prophecy, they had a lot to say. Some of the things they said were, we're not afraid of rain. We get rained on all the time and we're used to hurricanes and things like that and we'll be just fine. Some of them said that it was an outright lie that God had said nothing like that. Some of them, a lot of them, said that they do not worship Donald Trump. He's not an idol. He's just a man that they really, 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 really like. However, in the prophecy that was brought, the Lord showed that here in the United States, generally, he showed a very large statue of Donald Trump standing across the land. That statue was so tall that no matter where you were in America, you could see that statue. But however, in the actual land of Florida and in Texas as well, in those states, in Texas, they had raised up a smallish statue of Donald Trump. But in Florida, the statue they were raising up was so massive that it took an entire crowd of people to make it stand. And as they were trying to raise the statue up, it fell and it shattered to the ground. They did not take this prophecy lightly. They had a lot of rebuke. They had a lot of harsh words. They had a lot of rude comments about myself and the Lord himself. The Lord said that he was going to batter Florida with storms. He said that Florida would... Ex Ex experience extreme rain, extreme flooding. He said that Florida would become a land of sinkholes. That, that's those massive holes that suddenly open up. He said that the ground would begin to shift suddenly in places. This is a judgment that will come to Florida. He said that Florida is going to become a place that will experience category five storms and higher. So category five, I think is the top level that we have now, but God was saying in April, of 2023 that he reserves the right to punish the entire continental United States with natural disasters that will break record after record after record. So this country is going to see the kind of natural disasters across the board that have never been experienced before, meaning that we've experienced fires before, but the kind of fires that will start to rage will be so sudden and so drastic and have such terrible outcomes. And all he has been saying consistently is that he will exhaust the emergency services people. They will suffer PTSD, God said. They will suffer shell shock. They will be completely outfoxed, outnumbered, and outclassed by the kind of natural disasters that will happen. And he said that America will will become ashamed of FEMA and ashamed of disaster services, National Guard, Coast Guard, even if they bring in all the guards and all the branches of the army and the Navy and pool everyone together, the whole of them will be dumbfounded and confounded by the kinds of natural acts and disasters that will come upon America. Florida will get natural disasters that the rescue services will be unable to cope with. And there will be extreme loss of property that God said, and even death, Florida will break down. The other sins that were mentioned in another prophecy that is called headlines of the future were human trafficking in Florida, great pride in Florida, crime rates in Florida, and sexual immorality that is in Florida. And so this is what the Lord said. And now the Lord is saying here that New York and Florida will have floods. So on September the 15th, 2022, I released about a 40 minute prayer call. And the title of that prayer call is called civil war in America, September 15, 2022. And what God said is that New York's sin, her primary sin, is being a land of sodomy and sexual immorality. God is speaking directly here to the shocking, can't be matched by any other state in the United States, rate of homosexuality, out proud, out and proud homosexuality in New York City. He was also speaking of the abortion, especially the late term abortion laws that were passed, I think, in 2016 or 2017 here in New York City, uh, that even in the third trimester of pregnancy, a baby can be aborted. 
God also said that the problem with New York City is that New York City is overly tolerant. So people in New York City want to make room for all sorts. People in New York City want to tolerate every kind of thing that God hates. In fact, this is the city where if it's in the Bible as a sin, you can be guaranteed that in New York City, it is not only accepted, but it is praised and it is called diversity and it is called being different and it is being, it is called live your truth. And God says for that, the punishment for New York is even worse than Florida. Oh, one of the punishments for Florida is that God said um, that parts of Florida will break off and go into the sea. And the prophecy for that is from September and October, 2022. So there were many little snippets on natural disasters that the Lord was giving me. I put them all together, September, 2022, October, 2022. You can find that in one video. That video is called Natural Disasters, the trans army and the economy. And in that prophecy, God said that we will see death in Florida, storms in Florida, storms across America, basically that are so bad that social media will capture bodies that are floating in the water after the disasters are over. The Lord says that usually local news media and even, even national news media always extremely sanitize the news. So when something really bad happens, such as shootings that we've seen here in New York City, when people get shot here in New York City, it's almost as if the news media reserves the right to blur out reality by saying, oh, the next scenes will be disturbing. And then when they show it to you, they have blurred out the people, they've blurred out the blood, they've blurred out the shooter, they've blurred out the sky, the wind, the trees, the birds flying by, and all you can basically hear is a voiceover. And then we come back to the newscaster who says, I hope you weren't traumatized by that. But God says that this is the age of social media. And when natural disasters happen and people's bodies are floating by in the water, people will capture it and they will put it on all the social media sites and the social media sites will not be able to pull the videos down fast enough because people will take those videos and replicate them. And when they take them down, other people will replicate them and repost them everywhere. And the Lord says that for the first time, America will actually see what it is like when his hand of protection is removed and this nation begins to suffer the types of horrible, devastating mass death, natural disasters that other nations have always always experienced. So for New York, God says that the punishment will be that there will be nothing left, that everything about New York City will be taken under the water, that New York City will also experience natural disasters such as flooding, such as storms. And this has happened, I think, just at the end of September. At the end of September, I think on September 29th, there was also record flooding here in New York City to the point where many areas of Brooklyn were impassable. The water rose to the point that it was getting into the buses. The water rose to the point where many train stations were flooded out and you can trust the insurance companies to put a freeze on premiums. I know the one that I'm with put a freeze on premiums for about five days to make sure that all people who were coming after that, they put a freeze, I think, from the 30th of September all the way to the 5th. And that freeze was to make sure that anybody rushing to get house insurance or renter's insurance, as is my case, could not get new policies. So those of us who already have could not even use the website. The website was completely frozen and they did it like that so that they could quickly amp up the policies so that when new people are coming in, I guess, for them, they would, they would be getting much higher rates and please bear in mind, there are many prophecies on flooding on this blog from 2020 and 2021. One of them is called woe to the cities, floods, woe to the cities, floods. And what God was warning as far back as 2020 is when these natural disasters hit, many insurers are going to do what insurers do best. They're going to deny claims. So I already prophesied that, that you who are thinking that nationwide is on your side and like a good neighbor, State Farm will be there. This will not happen at all. Even if they know a thing or two because they've seen a thing or two, they will not give you two cents. When your home is washed away, when your farm is destroyed, when all your farming implements are hit by lightning and things like that, basically they will start to say in the United States of America, 
all the insurance companies will start to default on claims and they will say that acts of God are not covered. They already say that, but usually they are willing to look at things on a case by case business. However, when there begin to be masses of people bringing insurance claims, when masses of people are suddenly out of pocket, out of house, out of home, out of safety, out of everything, and they're rushing to the insurance company to at least try to withdraw a little money, that kind of mass influx, that kind of mass demand on the insurance company will be overwhelming and they will just put out a blanket no. So please know that you have been warned about that here on the Master's Voice since 2020. 2019 when the flood when the first flood prophecies were going up so that you can manage your expectations and so that you can have an understanding that though you may have a policy though you may have something on paper in reality you will be taking part in psalm 93 verse 4 where it says that the the lord on high is mightier than the noise of the flood it is time to start seeking God for safety, for instance, if you live next to the sea, or if you live next to an area that has already been pro prophesied to have floods. Those who trust in the arm of the flesh, you will be greatly embarrassed. God will see to it that you are put to shame if you're trusting in insurance policies and nest eggs and things like that. God is going to break the back of America. God is going to break the staff of bread in America. He's going to break every safety. He's going to break everything and everyone that people put their trust in. You trust in man, you are basically lining yourself up to be put to shame in the years ahead. The Lord is not going to tolerate rivals, especially when it comes to his people, especially when it comes to Christians. He is not going to tolerate people claiming that they are born again and yet putting their trust in, oh no, we're triple insured and double insured. He's going to allow you to have shame of face so that you can know that there's only one person who stands against floods of ungodliness, one person who stands against natural floods, natural disasters sudden things happening in this nation. And that is the Lord Yah himself. And so New York City will have nothing left. God says that New York City will be also trampled by armies. New York City is going to be occupied in the future. New York City is going to definitely come under occupation by foreign armies. And for her sins, he says that after she has been trampled underfoot by armies for a season, the sea will blanket this state. The sea will come up over New York City. The Lord says that he is going to smash and break all the, the high towers. This means the skyscrapers of New York City. And that will be her judgment for being defiant in sin. And so this is the word that the Lord said in the beginning of this prophecy today that is titled, The Floods Have Lifted Up that Florida and New York City are going to once more experience flooding, that the floods will lift up their voice against them and come back to them and be, and be worse than the two records that these states have sent. And God says it's because the hearts of Floridians and New Yorkers are extremely hard. They do not repent of the murders, high murder rates in both states. They do not repent of abortion, which is also a form of murder, and they do not repent of their fornication. This is pedophilia that you can find, human trafficking that you can find, um, male to male and female to female lifestyles, trans, transsexuality that you can find. God says you don't even repent of your idolatry and you continuously defy me. The voice of the Lord is mightier than the voice of many waters. The voice of God is above the voice of the floods. The Lord will weaponize the floods of his arsenal against Florida. You will be busted down to toothpicks, Florida. You will be broken down until your people are dead and floating in the water, displaced out of their property, the subjects of traumatizing scenes brought on by the defiance of people who think that they are greater than God. And so I just made allusion to this and I just spoke about how God says that because this is a highly social media using nation and that's what, that's what the whole world uses now. The world is increasingly relying on social media to get its news and its updates rather than relying on mainstream media. It's faster on social media and because it's coming from a ton of more phones, it is un filtered, it is uncensored, and you get to see live what is happening in capitals and cities 
all over the world. God says he's going to break Florida down to toothpicks using water and his voice is going to be over that water. In this case, God is not speaking of rescue from the floods. He's telling you that he will raise his voice loudly and command the floods to strike this state for its defiance until the people of Florida are going to experience extreme loss of life, extreme loss of property. And he says, they will be floating in the water. They will be displaced out of their property. This means having to go to government assistant camps, having to basically leave your home, having to basically leave your preps, having to leave your area. You're hearing these things and you're not actually going to God to seek God for mercy, to ask God to protect your property. You're just listening and you want to walk in defiance and say, well, we're used to flooding and things like that. Please understand that you are free to do with your soul, whatever you like. But to those who can hear the word of the Lord, if you know that I brought the same prophecy in April and 10 days later, it was fulfilled without warning. And that was only a wake up call from God to let them know that when he speaks and they speak, he will answer in a way that they will not be able to answer back. People will be displaced out of their property. And he says that they will be the subjects of traumatizing scenes that are brought on by their own defiance because they are people who think that they are greater than God. So if you want a biblical example for this, the only people you have to think of, just imagine if we had cameras and we could go back in time and ask the people in Egypt after the 10 plagues had hit them, well, you, the survivors, can you please let us know what are you thinking right now as you're standing outside your homes and each one of you, the final plague has come and each and every one of you have someone who is dead in your home. What's going through your mind right now? How do you feel about God? Those people would have been mute. Those people would not have been able to say a single word because the final plagues that the Lord brought upon them, the darkness, the fire that was falling from the sky with the sulfur that burned up their animals after they were told to put the animals and slaves inside and most of them did not do it. Only a few of them who had seen the first six plagues and came to fear God did it. The majority of them did not do it. People who defy God end up getting very harsh judgments from God. And the reason these judgments will not be turned back is because God says that America is very hardened in general, brazen in general, unchanged in general. When he speaks, they mock, they call the prophecies false. They call it doom and gloom. They call it fear mongering. And therefore the Lord will monger against America until when cameras are brought here by Al Jazeera and other people to ask in the aftermath of everything, what do you have to say remaining Americans? Just as the ancient Egypt, Egyptians, the Bible says that they, a dog did not move its tongue against Israel when the time came for them to leave. So even the dogs were afraid to bark in the same way for ingrained pride and hardening of the heart. When cameras, if cameras are to be brought here in the future, after all the mongering has mongered, as the hard hearted people say, after all the doom and the gloom has doomed and gloomed, the end of it will be what I prophesied all the way back in 2021. God says he will make America completely silent before him. Not a single person will have a word to say, except maybe a few voices that will just say, bless the Lord, our God. He is just and he is justified in all that he has done. The floods of the Lord are greater than the voice of the people. The voice of the Lord will be lifted against the United until the United States hears him. Birth pains, floods, fires, disasters, attacks, wars and rumors of wars. The voice of the Lord will dominate until he is heard through all the territories of the USA. The floods of the United States will be on the international news because of the nature and size of humanitarian crises and disasters it will cause. It will be on the world news because of the level of devastation to be seen and experienced by the hard-hearted, stiff-necked people who refuse to hear the Lord. Thus says the Lord, I will terrify you with floods. I will silence you with judgments until there are too few left of you to remonstrate with me. I will silence you with floods and fires 
disasters will, will abound in the land, even earthquakes in different places and on both coasts of the landmass. This is the word of the Lord. So again, I have just spoken in the previous section about something that now comes up in the next section. God's floods will silence the nation of America. The Lord says that his floods, the floods of punishment, the floods of judgment, the floods that are going to cause the United States to bend over like a woman experiencing severe labor pains that leave her breathless and without any words to speak. Women in labor don't tend to be that vocal except to express their emotions and pain. They're not in the most chatty space at that time. And that is because what they are going through demands all their attention. What they're going through usually leaves them helpless. What they're going through has them unable to speak. They do not have a choice about labor. There is not a woman on this earth who can delay her labor once it comes. In the same way, once the judgment of God comes upon this nation, there will be no repentance that you can lift up to make it go away. The time to repent, the time to seek God, the time to be quiet and begin to deepen your relationship with God, the time to actually have reverence for God and to not speak against his prophecy when it comes forward, to not presume to call it a lie when it is actually the truth that is set to come. The time to do that is now. For once the labor pains come upon this nation, every soul, as I have always said, according to Ezekiel 9, every soul will be bent over. The floods that are coming are greater than the voice of the people. This means that the floods will be speaking and the people will be saying nothing but help us, God. Why is this happening to us? Exactly what the people outside Noah's boat said. If you can just use your imaginations for five seconds, what do you think they said? Do you think they said, oh, but we've always had floods. Oh, but we'll build back better. Oh, but we're going to make the ancient world great again. Do you think that that is what they said? Those people cried for their lives. The pregnant women who were walking around with life in the belly realized what was happening by the fourth and the fifth day. Once that water was reaching up to those bellies and there was nowhere to go after they had climbed all the hills and after they had come out of the valleys and gone to the highest possible areas that they could, everyone realized what was happening and they didn't need to be MIT scholars to know where it was going to end up. It was a hapless, hopeless situation. And that is what happens when judgment comes upon the hard hearted who mock when judgments are being warned about, they mocked and they laughed for if they had taken seriously the love that God and Noah were showing, were showing them at that time to warn before it comes, that boat would have been equally full of man and beast. The voice of God will be lifted against the United States until the USA hears him. God is basically saying, I can keep going as long as you can keep going and I can tell you how it'll end. You will top out first. You will give up first. You will give up when the welfare fails. You will give up when the hospitals close. You will give up when you're calling 911 and only the sight robots are saying, hello, 911, and you think it's a human being, and it turns out to be those little automated voices, you will no longer get the 911 operator, and she will no longer tell you, please give me your address and stay strong, and we've got officers and units on the way. Nobody will come. God can keep going until America gives up. When the banking crisis that has been prophesied for years here hits, and the poverty hits, and the social security and the unemployment benefits both crash out because they can't take the demand on the system. God is saying that I've got all day. I can keep going until you stop America. I promise you as God, you will give up first and listen to what he says, birth pains, and then listen to what he's listing, floods, fire, disaster, attacks, wars, and rumors of war. So we are now right in Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 
verse 6, I think it is, speaks of wars and rumors of wars. So verse 6 is right at the beginning of what I personally call the festivities. The festivities just basically means the list of events, the table of contents, everything that Matthew 24 tells us. So people are waiting to go home to heaven. They're waiting for the rapture to happen. And yet in only verse 6, wars and rumors of wars are prophesied. And how many times since 2020 is when God introduced into the stream of prophecy that America will have a civil war. And then as the years progress, as the months were passing 2020, it was in 2022 that the Lord first gave a time period, no less than three years civil war. We're still talking Matthew 24 verse six. People are waiting to fly off to glory. And yet we are only in verse six for the Lord is only gathering his elect to come to him in Matthew 24 verse 31 wars, rumors of wars. America will have both. The Lord says that America will antagonize many nations and she will enter into many military conflicts and skirmishes. The chief of them, the final one that brings this nation to her knees, Russia and China. These are things that God is calling birth pains. And wars have been prophesied to many nations. It's not only the United States. So let us manage our expectations. The Lord says his voice will dominate until every territory in the United States hears him. So right now, only a select few are listening to the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. These are usually, what I found is, it's usually people that are already sincerely, sincerely praying to God to lead them to the truth. These are people who have already started to ask God, please, please, please don't let me be deceived. Please, I'm sick of listening to Julie Green and I'm sick of listening to Troy Black and Lance Wolnaw. I'm sick of listening to this place and that place. I'm sick of hunting around and finding tidbits that leave me uneasy because the tidbits match up with everything that Jeremiah 23 says. I have not sent these prophets, but they have gone. I have not sent these prophets, but they have gone. I did not send them, but still they ran and they prophesy a lie to you. And then they hope that I, the Lord will fulfill the lie. I didn't send them. I didn't authorize them. They prophesy to you of their own belly. God will speak. The people that God usually brings here for now are people who are seeking God in the first place. And he's showing them what I just call this early grapes mercy. He's bringing you here ahead of time because you want to get your heart right with him in the first place. You're already looking for him, for his tender mercy and his loving kindness to keep you and your family safe or just to comfort you. You've been looking for the truth because you are hearing the lie and it has a harsh and abrasive tone. It sounds sweet, but when it gets into your belly, you feel sick because you don't see how reality outside is matching up with what many of these liars are telling you. But the time will come where God says all territories will hear him. So this is after sinkholes have eaten up your city, perhaps. This is after a mini tsunami has destroyed, perhaps in the Great Lakes area, such as I prophesied a few months ago in the message that is called Headlines of the Future, where God was speaking of Oregon, God was speaking of the entire Great Lakes area, God was saying that a big part of Florida will break off and go into the sea. God is saying that both coasts of the USA will suffer natural disasters. And the natural disaster that he has mentioned here in this, in this section is earthquakes, earthquakes in diverse places and on both coasts of the landmass. And I already prophesied that on the California side that the Lord showed me, I think it was in 2018, a massive earthquake coming to San Francisco where I saw that the land rose up like this. It was pressed by such massive forces until it began to buckle and crumble. And it rose up in a heap like this. And then it went like a broken cookie and fell back to the earth. 
I also prophesied in a prophecy long ago, I think it is called wrath is upon the land that I saw a large part of California break off. And then it began to slide under the water like this, exactly the way you would take a dirty plate and just slide that dirty plate underneath the water. And so God will cause the entire USA to listen for now. The entire USA is not listening, but as the humanitarian crises, the nature and the size of it reaches proportions where even the international news, the way they covered that tsunami that hit Phuket, Phuket in Thailand years ago, the way people woke up all around the world and they were staring in confusion at CNN and BBC, Sky News, and all the different news networks telling us that thousands upon thousands of people had just been sucked into the sea, that a whole section of the, of the nation, the most popular tourist section had been destroyed. The way people wake up and just see disasters in the Philist um, Philippines, disasters in India like that, America will finally join those ranks. And God said, that is what happens when you lose his favor and he moves his hand of protection from over the nation. It will be on the world news because of the level of devastation that hard hearted, stiff necked people will experience because they refuse to hear God. And God says, I will terrify you with these floods. And I will also silence you with my judgments until there's too few of you left to remonstrate with me. To remonstrate means to talk back. Somebody say something, you say something. The Lord prophesies something, you take it and you make a video. And then you want everyone to know what your opinion on it is because you are Jesus 2.0. Remonstrate means to go back and forth with so God is basically saying that the way he's going to answer all the videos, the way he's going to answer all the blogs, the way he's going to answer all the false prophet accusations is to use judgments to bring silence. Why does it need to be like this? And I'm asking this question to the Christians first. Why does it have to be that the arm of the Lord must strike this nation until there is nothing left? Why must this be the nation that has to be pounded into silence because it won't fall silent by itself? You can find the answer in Revelation 18. Mystery Babylon, the defiant whore who will never repent until she's burnt with fire and all her friends will stand afar off and say nothing in her defense because they do not want the same judgment. And God warns in Revelation 18, he said, come out of her and be separate, lest you share in her judgments. So all nations will be wise and they will stand on the side and they will have nothing to do with what God is going to do to this country. I continue. The Lord says, I have pleaded with you, but you have not heard me. I took you aside to speak to you, but you refused my voice. Therefore, I will show you now my power, a narrow discipline narrowing judgments until there is no path for your feet except to go through the furnace of the judgments of the Lord. You will be in a furnace of my anger and discipline, and you will not like it one bit. So this bit really touched my heart where the Lord says, I pleaded with you, but you have not heard me. This is the very same argument that the Lord brought against his people in the old days, where he says, I took her aside to the desert and pleaded with her there. This is a picture of someone, a married couple who doesn't want to have a fight in the open. A man and a woman in covenant, if they have a disagreement, it's not good to do it in front of your friends. It's not good to do it in front of your family. It's not good to do it in front of your children. Mature people will take their argument to the one place that mature people have as their private space, the bedroom. You don't do it in the restaurant. The Lord is saying that I pleaded with you, but you didn't want to hear me. This is an iron hearted bride. This is an iron hearted bride that God is yoked to. He says, I took you aside to speak to you, but you refused my voice. This is Jesus's own warning to us. Jesus's own methodology that I think you can find in Matthew 15, where he says, if you have a problem, if you have a problem with your brother, first go to your brother. So don't start a gossip chain about your brother. Don't sow offense by telling others first, my brother did this to me, my brother did this to me, because 
Offense will bring discord into many hearts. The way that the Lord says for us to handle things, if a brother does this, whether it's a natural brother or a friend, a close friend, or even a church friend, the Lord says, go to that person, tell him his fault. And if he hears you, then you win your brother back. This means that if you go to someone and you tell them you've done this to me and that to me, and that person actually accepts and says, you know what? I hear you. I'm sorry. I didn't know you feel that way. The Lord says that instantly the relationship is healed, but he says, I took you aside, which means I followed my own protocols. I said to you, America, come here. There was a time when God would bring warnings to America. Not the whole nation would hear it. Social media wasn't like this in the seventies when Pastor David Wilkerson was warning. Social media wasn't like this. It wasn't there when Pastor David, when Pastor Dimitri Dudeman was warning. God was warning America in what we call conventions. So the people who had prophetic warnings would have to go to a Christian convention and then bring a word there and say, the Lord is saying this and this, if we don't turn back and we don't repent, it was happening mostly in private enclaves within the Christian community. But now people in India, I'm seeing from my Facebook page, there's people in all over South America. They're writing from Brazil. They're writing sometimes in Portuguese, and I have to click the translate button to see what they're saying. They're writing from Asia. People all over the world can now hear what is in store for America. And God says that this is already the start of shame. Why? Because you refused his voice. So because you refused to hear the word of prophecy, the word of prophecy came to you like a tennis ball, but you struck it back. You struck it back with your power serve and said, not us. We're good people here. And this is doom and gloom. So he says that now he will use power and very narrow discipline. Narrow discipline means that a father has had enough. And it is now past the point of discussion. A father has had enough. And now you do not get a say. Narrow judgment, he says, that leaves no path for the nation. No path for the people. Righteous and unright unrighteous. Please hear what I am saying. For I have been consistent from the beginning until now. Even the righteous here think that they will not suffer anything. But the wise righteous will be threshed out further from the unwise righteous. There will definitely come a separation between wheat and chaff, and then even the wheat will be separated between wise and foolish. There is only one path, and that is to go through the furnace of the judgment. You may be righteous, but if there's a mass fire, if there's a mass tsunami in your town, what do you think is going to happen? That your house is going to somehow float? The difference will be that God will provide a way for you, whereby for the unrighteous, it might be their time to check out of this life. Because of those floods, you might be one of the ones that rescue services will say, we had, there was, we had no idea that there was anyone in this house. We're so glad that we came back one more time to check. You still lose the house. You still lose the property. Insurance will still tell you no. But the sentence for that righteous will be the prophecy that I brought here in 2022. I will give you your life as a prize. God says that you will pass through the furnace of my anger and my discipline and you will not like it one bit. You will run from your homes. You will run from the storehouses and the gardens that you are trusting in. You will run from all your careful preparations to a land you do not know. Strangers will devour your provisions. Strangers will take what you have. Almost none of you will stay in your homes. You will take cover and shelter wherever you can take it, even in the homes of other strangers, if that's all that's available. But if you are children of Yah, you will be helped. You will experience the miracle of Canaan. The blessing of the Old Testament will unfold before you. And you will eat bread that is baked from flour that you did not store. And you will drink wine from private cellars that you do not own. You will be blessed of the Lord to enter houses that do not belong to you. Houses with provisions piled to the roof. While the unrighteous will live exposed to the elements or in government shelters that offer very little in the way of protection and provision. And so I brought the prophecy here. Just a moment, please. 
This message came from April the 2nd, the same day as the Texas and Florida flooding prophecy, and it's called Babylon Will Fall, Wars, Diaspora, and God's Timing. And what God said in that prophecy was that it is high time that America begin to talk to any friend that she has. If you're an American and you have a friend that comes from a country that suffered a war, and the nation that he gave as an example in that prophecy was the nation of Liberia. And that prophecy has come three times mentioning Liberia, which is that a brutal civil war erupted in that country and her people had to flee every which way that they could. And the death toll overall was above 250,000 people who lost their lives in a 15 year civil war. They were dispersed all over the world. And God was saying that in the same way that war came suddenly upon that nation, war will come suddenly upon America. And a key point that the Lord had in that prophecy in April was that events will happen here leading to war so suddenly that God said that people will abandon even their children, that fathers will run off surprised by the events that take place and will leave their own children behind. And I gave the testimony of a young man that was shared with me, a young man from Liberia who said that when he was an infant in the village, he was just lying in, in, in a hut laying on the mat with his parents and freedom fighters, rebels, guerrilla fighters surprised them in the village so suddenly that everyone in the village scattered because it was a night attack and people simply ran into the forest for safety. And his mother separated from everyone, the whole family separated. And I pointed out that here in America, people truly believe that events will be so neat that the whole family will have a time to get the bug out bag with the protein bars and the water and then run as a cohesive group. But that attack proves what happens in real life. The entire family scattered Father ran one way, mother ran one way. And as they ran, he said that his mom had gone quite for, far into the forest before she realized that she was running without her baby. She was running without her infant. And so she then had to take her courage. She had to pluck up courage and find her way back to where they lived and enter that place that was now having soldiers swarming all around and creep back to her home and take her precious bundle that she had forgotten when she ran. And God said, that is what the noise of the people shouting. This just means the sudden shock of bombing. This means seeing people running in panic every which way. That woman risked her life and went back. And this child was telling, this man was telling this, not from his memory, for he was a baby. He was telling it from his mother's recollection of the sacrifice that she made. And here God is saying again, this is one year apart. God is saying that people will run from their homes. God is saying that people will run from their prepping. You will run from your storehouses and the gardens that you're trusting in. So you can see all over YouTube, there's how to do a summer garden, how to do a winter garden, how to do a fall garden, how to do a spring garden, how to garden if you've never gardened before. There are a thousand helpful videos, how to get your heirloom seeds and your heritage seeds and all the seeds. And all God is saying is, I'm watching you and I'm watching you trust in your own arm to save yourselves. And I'm saving you time and telling you how it will be in the future. What you're storing up, you're storing up for my children. What you're storing up, I'm going to scatter it. You're going to be run off and you're going to go to a land that you do not know. This is, you're going to go to Mexico and live there if you wanna save your life. Running to Canada might not be the answer. You're going to run afar afield as wherever you can go. Please bear in mind that some of the places I have listed are Guam, Papua New Guinea, and Beirut. And the word of the Lord was that, Celestial, you will see them going to places that now if you ask them to choose a holiday or tourist destination to spend their money on, they would never pick these places. God says, America, these places are going to be your new home. And when you go there, you will be very humbled. When you go there, you will be a brand new person. No opinions, very silent, trying to blend in with the local population. Very quiet and humble and trying not to draw any attention to yourselves. 
All your preparations, you will run from them and go to a land that you do not know. And God says that strangers will take what you have. So all the provisions, all the everything that people are putting aside now, he says almost none of you will stay in your homes because you're going to be running for cover and running for shelter wherever you can find it. Wherever you can find it. He says, even if you go and live in another person's home. So after you run away for a while and it's dark and you really want to sleep somewhere and you see a house and there's nobody there, you're going to end up going and sleeping in another person's house. And this is what he means. You that has the house that you ran from, somebody else will find your house and live in your house and eat your provisions for a few days until it gets too dangerous and then they'll have to move on. And the person who had that house and ran on, you'll be in somebody else's house, making your way to wherever you can find a coyote to get you over the wall to Mexico or to get you wherever it is that you can go for safety. The children of God are also going to end up doing this, but God says that they're going to have miraculous experiences, just like the old Testament, because they're going to end up in fully stocked and fully prepped houses. So you enter a fully prepped house. And you give thanks to God and you stay there one or two nights and you're thinking, what do we do? And the Lord tells you, rest in this house and I will watch over you. Rest in this house and I have taken it upon myself to provide for you. And God says, that's when you'll start going down to the basement. Use a crowbar on the basement and then find all the wine from France and Italy and the moon. You will drink wine from wine cellars that you don't own. And the bread that you'll be baking in that house will come from hand milled flour that you didn't store. And God says that I will bless you and you will enter homes that don't belong to you and find those homes prepped to the roof. But the unrighteous will find themselves living outside in the wilderness, exposed to the elements, or they will end up in government shelters that won't give them hardly anything to protect them or provide for them. So they're going to give you that thin little shiny emergency, no freeze blanket and maybe the food that they give the people in the army that you have to squeeze out through the tube and things like that. And those people will be grieved in their heart. And this too is the punishment of the wicked because you put your trust in the things that you could store up and you didn't put your trust in the Lord. The wealth of the wicked is store up, stored up for the righteous. But do you know what it means? God will keep the wealth of the wicked people until the time that he needs it. Then he will take it and give it to those who truly please him. And the Lord was speaking to me. I captured all this when I was still in church. And then when I was on the way home, the Lord was telling me that I've chosen you to bring my word to them. So he was speaking to me and he told me, I've chosen you to bring my word to them in and out of season, to speak on behalf of Yah to a generation that does not want it. Speak and let the word be heard. For at the time they want it, it will not come forth. There will be a dearth of prophecy in the earth, and men will seek for failing eyes for any sign of hope from God. What says the Lord will be their cry, but the word will not come forth. Only to my chosen will my voice still be received. The people of God will hear their shepherd when they cling to him in the secret place, but the wicked of the earth will be cast out and spewed out of the Lord's mouth. And so if I can explain it to you, I have said it many times that the Lord speaks in the earth and the Lord has his chosen vessels that he has called and prepared for such a time as this. But what God is saying is that to be faithful to this call that he has given me for, I am determined to be faithful to the call no matter what. He says that it requires speaking the word in and out of season. So speaking the word in season is usually when the word is pleasant. That is the word that people want. People always want a pleasant word. January to December, if you bring a prophecy of hope, glory, victory, and usually America's favorite phrase, God's not done with America. God's got more in store then you will have 22 million fulfillion people tuning into that live stream because that is the kind of befuddlement that people love to hear. They can see that we are in the times of Daniel chapter seven. They can see that we are in the times of Matthew 24 and Revelation six. However, what they want to hear is different from what they can see. Because of what they see, their hearts are heavy. And so they are looking for someone to lie to them 
and prophesy to them soft things. However, the word out of season means that when the truth is coming forth and people are tired, frustrated, broke, and wanting a good word, the truth of what is actually going to take place is not welcome. That truth is kicked away like a child that doesn't want vegetables, like a dog that is full and wants something else. That truth is refused. It is rejected. Don't prophesy to us anymore. Don't tell us dreams anymore. And the Lord is saying here, Celestial, speak the word in season and out of season. Give it to them, whether they want it or whether they do not want it. Speak and let the word be heard. Why is this? Because there can be no performance of prophecy until it is proclaimed. If it sits here in my notebook, it is not active. It has not been proclaimed. It has not been activated through the mouth of a herald saying, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord is not a light statement. No person who just has a dream or who just sees something, or the Lord told me this in my, my Bible study, that is not thus saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord is a phrase of authority. God is saying, when you hear this, I said it, I mean it, I will do it. It's not just a spiritual observation. It's just not a word of knowledge. It's not a word um, of, you know, it's not a word of, oh, God told me this. It's not a word of confirmation. It is actually a speaking forth that activates something in the spiritual realm. And if by now you cannot hear that prophesying wars, and mass death to one of the most powerful nations on earth is not a game, is not a toy, then I don't know what to tell you. Speak and let the word be heard because at the time they want it, it will not come forth. What does this mean? There will come a time. When is that time? That is the time that the nation is silenced by God. That is the time when the nation has nothing to say anymore. That is the time when the Lord says, Prophecy will be nearly gone from the earth. So it's either that God will take actual prophets away, whether through death, whether through taking them into hiding, or whether through simply telling them to stand down. And I've always said that when the tap goes dry, that is when the spiritual drought begins. This is when men will be seeking God and not finding him. He says that people will be looking with failing eyes. This means that you would wish for someone to even just tell you with prophetic authority, God says to you, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Even that little verse, God says he will switch off the top and you will not hear it. You will just have to scribble it on a tiny piece of paper that you keep tucked in your new world order pants and take it out and look at it against the law and put it back. And that is how you will feed your spirit because food, good food that is hated now will no longer be there. He says that people's eyes will fail looking for a sign from him. And all I can tell you when I, when I was writing this down, as the Lord was speaking it to me, I'm walking home, I'm writing it down on my phone. I thought of Jesus on that cross. God never went anywhere, but Jesus felt abandoned. God was right there watching with a breaking heart as his son was making his final sacrifice for us. And Jesus was calling on his father. He too was looking with failing eyes as he said, Eli, Eli. And God didn't say anything to him. Jesus felt abandoned. And for a while, Christians who are rushing off the face of this earth, rush, 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 see you in the clouds rushing, rushing to a date that God is not ready yet to keep with you because there are things that must come. Purging, judgment, punishment, and discipline, narrow discipline that goes through the furnace. We too, wise ones who will be separated from foolish, we too will feel abandoned. But God will still be there. He says only to the chosen, the ones who are receiving his voice, only to the chosen, his voice will still be received. And God's people will hear their shepherd when they cling to him in the secret place. But the wicked of the earth will be cast out and spewed out of the Lord's mouth. This means that when you retire to the prayer closet in those days, 
and you perhaps pour in hours and hours and hours of worship, perhaps with tears, seeking the Father, then yes, something will come back. A little word planted like a seed in the garden of the heart to keep you going, to keep you saying, I am not alone. He is with me. He will never leave or forsake me. But to the larger mass, it will not be the case. There might be a whole group of people praying and praying, and then God will just say perhaps two or three words to the leader. And then the leader will bring out that thing. The Lord is saying this, and then everyone will gratefully receive, gratefully receive of those two or three Bible verses and feed on that thing. Because the word of God is actually the food of the spirit. Our spirit doesn't eat Netflix and chill. Our spirit doesn't eat all the talk of social media. All those things will be removed. The glory of the Chaldeans, the thing that is called the United States of America will all be torn down, torn down to nothing. That is the time where when you hear this kind of thing that is receiving donkey kicks now, it will be so gratefully taken. And for months, if God doesn't say anything else, people will say, yes, but do you remember that time we prayed around the fire and he gave us this word, faint not, I am with you even to the end. Let's remember that. Does anyone have a song? People will be very reverent in those days. People will be very few. There will certainly be less arguments and absolutely no recording for TikTok, no recording for YouTube, no commentary of any kind. It will be a completely remodeled America. And if that is what it takes, remember that God has said in this word that he is not tired and all the territories of the United States will hear him. This is the word of the Lord. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. You can find all the different places to follow the blog in the description box. They will be put there for your convenience. God bless you and keep you. And until I see you again, goodbye.